Using smokeless powder in a muzzler always ends up in the gun breaking, loss of property, injury to the shooter, coma and death. <laughs> Except when it doesn't. Welcome back to Becky Ballistics. Today we're busting one of the biggest taboos in sports shooting activities, using smokeless powder in a muzzle loader. But before doing that, I need to tell you something very important. Loading smokeless powder in muzzle loaders can actually result in the gun blowing up, unless very specific procedures are followed, as you will soon discover. So let's get started. First off, I want to encourage all of you to critical thinking. Imagine two generic guns. One is a muzzle loader and the other a cartridge gun. Once they are ready to fire, what is the difference between them? Aren't them, at least for what concerns internal ballistics, just a pipe closed at one end and open at the other? Of course they are. So why should the proper land we put between the breech and the bullet bother? It won't, and the experiment I'm going to perform will actually validate this reasoning. But if all of this is true, why does everybody, including myself, stresses out that using smokeless powder in a muzzle loader can be extremely dangerous? There are basically two reasons, both of which are due to the fact that black powder and smokeless powder are massively different in their burning behavior. The first reason, quite simple to understand, is that the appropriate amount of propellant to use is completely different from black to smokeless. Generally, the amount of smokeless required to get the same maximum pressure is much lower than that of black. It is natural at this point to ask the question, OK then, if I get the right amount of smokeless, will I be OK using it in my muzzle loader? And the answer is a resounding no, at least not always. And that's because of the second reason I told you about, the not so simple one. The massively different burning behavior of smokeless powder doesn't only influence the amount of propellant needed to reach a certain pressure, but also the enormously higher sensibility of smokeless powder to four parameters. The burn rate, the amount used, the bullet weight and the loading density. As you'll soon discover, even slight variations of one of those parameters will either cause an overpressure or underpressure. Let's examine them one at a time. First comes the burn rate, which is due to the geometry and composition of the propellant. You probably already know that there is a huge variety of burning rates of smokeless powder. To cover the reloading of typical handheld weapons, each producer generally offers a range of at least 10 different burning rates. If using loading data for a particular burn rate you load with a different one, problems will arise. Using a faster burning powder will cause overpressure and using a slower one will cause the cartridge to underperform heavily, also greatly deteriorating the consistency. Black powder, on the other hand, is basically all the same. You actually get four different commercial granule sizes, but in typical conditions they don't make that big of a difference. The second parameter to which smokeless powder is highly sensible to is the actual amount you use. The powder performs well in a very narrow range of weight, typically smaller than 10% of the total used. On the other hand, the peak pressure caused by black powder in typical weapon use is much less sensible to charge weight and in my experience it is almost impossible to get over 1000 bars. You can even find a video on YouTube where a guy filled up a musket barrel halfway with black powder and shot a regular ball out of it, with no apparent problem. Without reaching those excesses, it is still clear that typical charge measuring tolerances will be absolutely irrelevant to safety. Same thing happens for the bullet weight. Using a heavier bullet without adapting the charge will cause no problems when using black powder, but will cause dangerous pressures when using smokeless. A double bullet load, which is not that uncommon in muzzle loading, poses no risk when done with black powder, at least in modern guns, while with smokeless it would probably lead to a disaster. Finally, and most importantly, smokeless powder generated pressure is heavily dependent on loading density, which is the ratio between the powder weight and the free chamber volume. In case of black powder, the rule is very simple and always applies. The bullet is pushed all the way in so that no empty space is left. Leaving empty space might actually cause accidents, but that's the topic for another video. In case of smokeless, on the contrary, the presence of, of empty space is very common and the amount of it is crucial to get a certain pressure level. Now that we know all of the differences, we can devise a way of using smokeless powder safely in a muzzle loader. All we need is to make sure that the maximum pressure of each of our shots will not exceed the maximum operating pressure of the gun, while still being high enough to get the performance we want. 
First of all, we need to focus on a particular burn rate, and to be more specific, on a particular model of powder that is appropriate for the type of performance we want to obtain. Once we get the data for that particular powder, it won't be useful for any other one. Then, we need to make sure that the tolerances of our powder measures will be very tight. This means that we are going to prepare the doses at the reloading bench with the same equipment used for cartridge reloading. As for the bullets, we will choose a particular weight, and again, the load data we will calculate is only going to be used for that particular bullet weight. Finally, and most importantly, we need to be consistent in the amount of space given to the powder charge, which depends on how far down the bullet is seated, and this is particularly tricky in muzzle loaders since we need to actually use some sort of measuring, instead of just ramming the bullet as low as possible down the barrel, as we generally do with black powder. In case of black powder revolvers like this one I'm going to use, we will just need to take into account the stroke length of the bullet seater. I measured that it pushes the point of the bullet down by about 10mm from the top of the cylinder, so our loading can be schematized as follows. We have a chamber length of about 34mm and the point of the bullet is sunken by 10mm. The bullet itself is long 14mm, so this leaves us with a loading space about 10mm long. Considering the calibre is 45, this corresponds to a chamber volume of about 1 cubic centimetre. Now that we have chosen all our parameters and provided that we will always respect them, we can work out the load. There is of course a mathematical model of internal ballistics that allows us to calculate how much powder we need to use in order to reach a particular pressure. The most practical way to implement it, and the one that I normally use, is through a software called Quickload. I am not sponsored by them by any means, I wish I was. It is just an extremely handy piece of software and it actually sells for quite cheap, so I strongly recommend it if you are interested. Naturally, who prepared the graphical interface of the program wasn't expecting us to use it for muzzle loaders, so I will have to trick it a little bit to get what I need. I'm selecting 45 ACP as the cartridge and then I will modify the case capacity until I get a usable case capacity equal to the one we have in our cylinder. Then I of course reduce the maximum pressure to 800 bars, insert the bullet weight I'm going to use, select the powder and work out a load that gets me to about 15% less than maximum pressure. With the propylene I am using, a fast burning low density powder, I get a value of about 4.5 grains. Important note at this point, Quickload uses a simplified mathematical model, which is generally quite accurate, but as any model it has its limits. In particular, it tends to overestimate pressures with low pressure loads like our, and in fact I had to adjust the amount a little bit by myself, increasing the load to 5 grains. Now let's get ready for shooting. First I need to weight out some loads. As I said, I need to be precise, so I am pre-weighting my powder doses at the reloading bench and using some spent cases to store them. Of course the case is only used as a container. I prepared some 4.5 grain loads, like quick load suggested, and some 5 grains ones. For the bullets, I didn't have some proper muzzle loading ones, so I had to make my own modifying some 45 cold bullets, which I had to trim and size, getting to a weight of about 190 grains. As for the gun, I'm going to use this cheap Pieta revolver, a replica of a Remington 1858. Definitely not the best though, the crown is off center, the finish is peeling off, the frame has some foundry defects. And as a fun fact, they didn't even realize that their brand name, FAP or FAP, may sound ridiculous in an English speaking country. Anyway, let's load a few rounds, shall we? I start by transferring the powder loads to the chambers. I'm doing five of them here. I've noticed that using a small piece of paper towel to keep the powder seated against the bottom of the chamber helps in consistency, so I'm doing that. Keep in mind that we cannot use a proper wadding, since that would reduce the usable capacity. If we wanted to use some wadding, we had to consider it in the load calculation phase. Our piece of towel takes very little space though, so I found it's a good solution. After that comes the bullet. As I mentioned, I didn't have the proper conical bullets for it and didn't want to use round balls, so I obtained them from some 45 cold hardcast bullets. The only problem with these is that they are not healed, so loading them in the cylinder is a massive pain in the butt. Also, they might be a little too long for the twist rate of this gun, but they will do fine for a proof of concept. Anyway, after ramming down the 5 bullets and giving my aching fingers time to recover, I prepared to shoot at 25 meters. I decided to use this new camera view, with which you are literally seeing what I'm seeing, since I'm actually aiming through the screen. It is a little bit tricky, and I actually had to relearn how to aim, 
and still the accuracy is probably suffering from the awkward position. Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of first person shooting or if you prefer to see the gun from the side as usual. The recoil is quite consistent. On one of the rounds I think I felt a little bit of a hang fire, but that's to expect with cup and bolts even when using black powder. I went to recover the target and here it is, definitely not as good as what I generally do with cartridge revolvers, but still not bad considering that I was aiming through a screen with a far from ideal bullet and a load I had never tried before, so there's definitely big room for improvement. I reload it again and fire three more shots in the same way as before and this is the result. So to answer the title question, what happens if you use smokeless powder in a muzzle loader? Well, if you do it just right, which is quite tricky and I honestly wouldn't recommend it, everything will work out fine. If you do it wrong though, you will likely blow your gun up. Let me know in the comments if you liked this video or not and tell me if there's something that you would like me to improve. If you didn't like the video, feel free to click the thumb down. It has no negative effect on the popularity of the video and it will be easier for me to understand what you like and what you don't. In any case, I strongly suggest you to subscribe, as small and monetized channels like mine don't get a lot of attention from YouTube, so subscribing is the only way of getting my videos to show up to you. Anyway, that's all I wanted to tell you. See you next time. Bye.